Hello, you are welcome to Classic Fashion Design Academy YouTube channel. My name is Ken Yoluwa Bukolo Ogidari, Creative Director Classic Fashion Design Academy. This is still a beginner series. In this video, you are going to learn how to draft basic skirt pattern. I have explained it in, in, in a previous um, video that pattern is just a template from which you derive variation of styles. Like we have the skirt pattern, the, uh, the, the bodice pattern, the sleeve pattern, the trouser pattern, and so on. But in today's video, we are just going to look at the basics of drafting a skirt pattern. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and also hit the notification bell, so that each time I drop a video, you can get notified. Now, to draft a basic skirt pattern, you need the waist measurement. This is a sacrificial measurement that you take round the waist. You also need the hip measurement. It's also a sacrificial measurement. You take it round the waist. Then you need the full length from the waist to the floor length. I prefer to work with that length because it's a basic skirt. When you have the full length of the skirt, you can decide to take any other shorter length from it. So that is why I prefer to work with the full length to draft the basic skirt pattern. Then you also need the mean length from the waist to the mean. Now to the time where you take your measurement around the waist, it depends on the, the skirt variation you are working on. You know we have the, the high waist skirt that you will take the measurement of the waist a little bit higher from where you want it to start from. Then individual interest also matters. Some people will tell you, some clients will tell you that I want my skirt to be below my narrow. That is where the, the person is comfortable with. Some people will tell you that I want it above it. But the ideal place is to, for it to be around the natural waist, which is around the navel. So that is that. Then the hip measurement, that is around the fullest part of the hip. That is where you take the hip measurement. To take the measurement, you need your tapro. You, on both, you can work with either side of the tapro. You know, the, the, the fig, where the figure is more enlarged, that is where you have the inches. You have one inches, you have two inches down to 60. Then the other side, you have the in cm. 2.5 cm is equivalent to one inch. You can choose to work with either side of the table. So just get used to that as a beginner. You know, you know, no, you can choose the one you are comfortable with. But at the same time, I want you to know that you can work with either side of the table. So to draw this pattern, I would like to work with CF. Now, so if you want to take the waist measurement, you can do that yourself. Just take it around the waist, around your waist, where you mostly prefer your skirt to start from. And it should not be too loose, it should not be too tight, but it should be fitting enough. Let, don't, don't let it be too tight. Make sure that it you know, is to your comfort. At the same time, it should not be too loose so that it will not lose shape. And when you are taking the waist measurement, avoid putting the whole of your finger, the four fingers inside it. Just hold it at the tip like this. Then the same thing, if you want to take the hip measurement, just take it around the fullest part of the, of the hip. Take it round. It's also a sacrificial measurement. Make sure that it hangs at the back like this. Don't let it drop. You know, let it hang around the fullest part. Just try and locate wherever you have the fullest part of your hip. You know, some people have, you know, they are hippy here, and for some people, it's much as the bottom. So anywhere you think you have the fullest, you know, you know where you have the fullest part, that is where you should hang the table round to, to take your measurement. So when you have done the sacrificial measurement, then you also take the, I mean, you also take the vertical measurement. Now, from the waist down to the knee length, you don't have to look down. You have to stand upright. Someone can assist you with that. From the waist down to the knee length. Then from the waist again down to the floor length. So that is how to take the vertical measurement. As I explained how to take the, um, the sacrificial or horizontal measurement. Now, I want to explain how you will express all these measurements taken on the pattern. For you to 
to turn the pattern, you need a template. The template can be the brown paper. Please, I will refer you to the previous video that I have um, that we have done on 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 introduction to pattern making. Please try and watch it; you will understand better. So, a basic pattern is basically a template from which you derive variations of uh, styles. Like now, from the measurement we have taken, we can express it on a template. The template can be a paper. It, you know, but you know this is already drafted pattern. I just want to want you to see what it looks like. I will still draft another one for you now on the board. Now, this is what the basic sketch pattern looks like. If you, you are going to do your own on a brown paper, I prefer you do it on a brown paper. So when you have your brown paper like this, at the uh, at the top, at the top of the paper. Measure one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch, and make sure that the line is very straight. Then use your ruler to, you know, to connect all your dots from here one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. Then you rule it straight. That will represent your top line or your waist line. Make sure that your line is straight. Please don't don't draft a pattern with your bare hand. Get your patterning tools. I also refer you to the video done on patterning too, so that you can know the right thing to use to draft your pattern. So when you got this straight line, it represents your top line or your waist line. Now, from the the, the, the left right hand end of the paper, you know you, you need to also set a margin from where your measurement starts. So from here to from the very tip of your paper. You can also measure one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch, and connect it straight. That will be your margin on this side. Then you do the same on the other side. On this paper, I have the front and the back pattern separated. This is the center front. This is the center back. Now, from the, the top line, from the top line, you want to get the distance between your waist to the hip. It is very necessary, very crucial for you to do that. From the waist line or the top line, the distance between here to here is averagely eight and a half inches or 22 cm. This is general. You can use that. You can use that in all cases because it's, it is, it's, it's an average measurement that is acceptable. Please, I want you to get used to that. The distance from the waist to the hip is always, is mostly, in, in general cases, is eight and a half or 22 cm. So from the top line or the waist line, just mark from here to the here, 22 in cm or eight and a half in inches. From here to here, 22 cm, from here to here, 22 cm. Then you connect with a straight line. So that represents your hip line. All these lines are necessary because they help you to know the, you know, the, the right placement of, of where the body shape lies. So you, you have to get it right from the beginning. So from waist to hip, the distance is eight and a half in inches or 22 cm. When you are making either your skirt or your trouser pattern, it's still the same distance. And that is why you use a short zipper. That is why you always use a short zipper, which is also around that measurement for your skirt or your trouser. So the distance between waist to hip that every fashion design student should know is that the 22 cm or eight and a half inches. Now, from the waistline again, you now express the knee length measurements you took on your body from the waist to the knee. Like for what we are working on now, from the waist to the knee is 22 inches or 56 cm. So I go with 56 cm. From waist to the knee is 56 cm from the measurement I'm working with. From waist to knee is 56 cm. From waist to knee, 56 cm. Then you rule it straight. So that represents your knee length. So if I want to 
to make a short skirt, I can go with this length. Now, if I want it a little bit above my knee, I can come up to my own desire. If I want it to be a three-quarter skirt, I can go down. If I now want it to be a full-length skirt, like I said, I'm going to work with the floor-length measurement. But this pattern that I'm going to work with is 38 inches or 97 cm. So from the waist again to the floor length or to the hemline of the skirt is 97 cm. So from waist to the hemline or to the full length, 97 cm. From here to here, 97 cm. From here to here, 97 cm. Then rule is split. So you can you will discover that we have uh, okay. Now look at this last one that we have to talk about. From the you know from the waist to the hip, I said it's 22 cm. Half of it, midway in between the waist and the hip line. This is 11 cm. That represents almost the length of your gut, and it also starts as your yoke line. Anytime you want to make a skirt variation that has a yoke at the upper part, and maybe you have a kind of design like flare that flares out from the yoke line, you, you know, you can follow this line. All these lines help to define your style. It also helps to define when, how the, the body contour will run, you know, after sewing, the, after making the skirt. So don't forget, you have the waistline. This can also be the upper hip line, then the hip line, the knee line, and the full length line or the hem line. So you should get used to all these um, horizontal lines. You should get used to all that. Now, you know, you look at if you look at this skirt, you know, I try to bring out these different um, skirt lengths to to further make some explanation. If you look at this skirt, this is a short skirt of the knee length. You can see it. And at the knee, you can see that it's a little bit fitted towards the knee. This is a short pencil skirt. It is a knee length pencil skirt. So now from the basic, from the basic skirt, this is where your hip line is. This is where your knee line is. You can shape it like this. You can shape, you can come in from here to here to like two inches or five cm. Then you connect it. That would is what will give you your pencil skirt. Now this is what the basic skirt actually looks like. This basic skirt, the hip measurement is what runs down. You know the hip measurement is what runs down to the knee and to the to the hem line or to the full length. It's just a straight skirt. That is what makes your basic skirt pattern. Now, I want to explain, I want to, you know, I want to do a, a further demonstration of how to use the measurement again for you to see, you know, so that you can watch it practically and also do get a brown paper and try out your own. Now, to draft the basic skirt pattern now practically, Please, as you watch, I want you to practice along. Just take a brown paper, settle down on your table, and repeat exactly the same. You will understand it more. Now, the required measurement, the waist is 74 cm, the hip is 94 cm, the knee length is 57 cm, then the full length is 97 cm. You know, the waist round the waist, the hip round the hip, the knee length from waist to knee, then the full length from waist to the floor length or whatever length, and it's to the floor length, yes, it's better that way. Now, let's look at this. Let's assume this is your brown paper. This is the tip of your paper. Just mark one inch or 2.5 cm. Do the same round and connect with a straight line. Now, you can write your waist line. So that is the waist line. Now, from the waist line, you want to place the waist to the hip distance. The waist to the hip distance mark 22 cm. 22 cm. From the waist, 22 cm. Mark it. From the waist, 22 cm. You mark it. 22 cm. You mark it. When you are, are done, just connect the lines together. 
Make sure that you are using a good ruler for that. Just connect the lines together. So when you have connected the lines, it shows you the distance from the waist to the feet. That is a standard measurement. You can use it generally. You can use it for all. It's acceptable and it works everything. So from in between the line, in between it, that is from waist 11 cm, 11 cm, also connect a straight line. That will give you your upper hip. That is your upper hip line. Upper hip line. Now, waist to, uh, to hip. That, this is the line. That, this represents your hip line now. This can be your upper hip line. This can be your upper hip line. Now, the knee length measurements you took from the waist line again. All the measurements start from the waist. You can see that is why you need to have the, 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 the top line to start to take your measurement from. Now, you want from the waist to the knee length now, 56 cm, 56 cm, 56 cm. Just make sure that you go along with your ruler and your tape measurement, tape rule. Then when you are done, you also connect it. Make sure you connect it accurately. Please avoid a slanting line. Make sure that your lines are all accurate. So that will be the main length. So that is the main length. Now the full length, 97 cm, do the same from the waistline. Do the same. So that is that. Do the same. So when you are done with that, you also connect with your ruler. So that is the full length line. Please, when you have done that, you need you you, you need um, like extra five cm hmm, or two inches. Just mark it. That will help you to do the, your finishing. That's to fold up the end line of your skirt. But this is actually the exact measurement. You just give it like 2 inches or 5 cm extra that you use to fold up your skirt. Now, you, are, you have gotten all your horizontal lines. You have gotten all your horizontal lines now. Now, this can represent your center, center front or center back. It can represent either of the two. It can represent your center back or center front. Now, when you have done that, when you have done that, we now want to input our waist and the hip measurement along this line. Now, the waist measurement, like I said, is 74 cm. Now, this is the 74 cm. To so that 74 cm, you can add 2 cm. This 2 cm you are adding extra can serve as your ease allowance. If, if When you measure the skirt, you measure it as fitted as possible, you know, but not to discomfort. So when you do that, you can add 2 cm of ease allowance. The exact waist measurement now is 74 cm plus 2 cm of ease allowance. You are going to divide that by four. I put that into bracket. The 74 cm, which is the exact waist measurement, plus 2 cm, which is ease allowance, divide by four. Whatever you get, you now add 3 cm to it. This 3 cm is your dark allowance. You know, please, I refer you to the previous video where I give a detailed explanation of what a dark is. That is the excess you fit in order to give fitting to whatever you are making. You need to make allowance for it. And every skirt, you know, skirt should have a dart. So this is what the dart is. That is, that is the dart on the skirt. So you have to pick your dart. So you add 3 cm. Please make sure you have added the main, the main waist measurement plus 2 cm of ease allowance divided by 4 before you add 3. But adding this allowance is good. But in situation where you really want the you know whatever you are making to be extremely fitted, you may not add this allowance. 
So if you do not have this allowance, just divide directly by four and add your DAT allowance. That allowance is very essential. So if you may or may not add this allowance. If the fabric is a little bit stretchy, you may not need this allowance. But in most cases, you can add this allowance, divide by four, before you add the DAT allowance. So when you have done that, what you will get is 22 cm. So on the waistline, please come to the waistline. See, you know, where your margin line and your top line intersect, mark your point O. So that is where your measurement starts from. So you want to input this 22 cm. So you now come with your tape rule. You know, where these two lines, the waistline and the margin line, where the two meet here, mark point O and put your tape rule and mark out your 22 cm. So that is it. So when you do your own, whatever your waist measurement is, you add two cm to it, you divide it by four, and you add three cm, which is your DAT allowance. When you divide whatever you get, for mine, in my own measurement, I got 22 cm. Whatever you get from point O, use your tape rule, please, or your ruler. Mark mark it along the waistline. So this, that is what I start here. Now, you go to the hip again, the hip measurement. The hip measurement I'm working with is 94 cm. For the hip, 94 cm plus 2 cm of ease allowance. Ease allowance. You know, just to give a little bit of ease. So 94 cm plus 2 cm divided by 4. When I did that, I got 24 cm. So whatever you get with your own measurement, now go to the hip measurement. The, and exactly the same thing here, this is your point O. Use your tape rule. Hmm? Use your tape rule. Use your tape rule. Whether you are working in inches or in cm, use your tape rule. Then mark out for exactly what you got. For me, it's 24. 4 cm, where I have 22 cm here. So you can see that, you know, here, here is lesser than here. That is my shape. Then I will use my French for to connect the two. So, you know, and along the hip line, I got 24 cm. Please, on the knee length, mark also the same thing. Mark the same 24 cm. Mark the same 24 cm. Then on the floor length, on the full length, which is your hemline, mark also the same 24 cm. Now, please, sorry, always use your French curve. You know, this is a French curve. You want to connect because you, you do not have a straight line here. It's a, it has a little curve. Here is 22, here is 24. Yours may be more than that. Then you connect. Now, from the waist to the hip, that is where the body curve is. Now, here is 24, here is 24, here is 24. All I need to do there, I don't need, I don't really need the French curve there. I will use my straight ruler, you know, just to connect the straight line. You can see it. So that's what the basic step looks like. Now, to input the dart, to fix this dart, to fix this dart, you know, Take the, 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 the distance from your point O to where the placement of your dart is averagely is 10 cm or 4 inches. That you can use in all situations. And what will help you to place that is the, your boss pan. That is your nipple to nipple measurement. Mine is, mine is um, 18 inches. You know, because you are, you are, this is a quarter, you know, we divided by four. That, so 
that is why it is going to be um, 8 or 20, I mean, 10 p.m. rather. So that, that, that is it. So you, from point O to here is 20, I mean, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. because it's half of it. From here to here, also 10 p.m. Then you now connect it. The length of your dart is resting on your upper hip. So now you connect with the straight line. So that is my dart. You know, the dart um, allowance we included is 3 cm. This is going to be the midline of your dart. So to the right, to the left, you share out the dart measurement. So you are going to have 1.5 cm here, 1.5 cm here. Then you connect with your ruler. You have to slant it. Please make sure that you slant it. So that is the dart placement. The distance of your dart, I repeat that again, from your point O, you know, to just is 4 inches or 10 cm. And the length of the dart is going to be on this upper hip line, which is the 11 cm. So that is how to place your dart. And I said, you can use your boss hand to also determine. That is your nipple to nipple measurement. That will help you to place your dart. Or you go with the average parameter, which you can always use for, for everybody, which is four inches or 10 cm. The distance from the center, that is your point O, that is from here to here, from here to here, that is how to place your dart. So that is your dart placement. So this is what the basic sketch simply looks like. It's possible to, to have two of these exactly the same. The same, and what you do here, you also do on the other side. Just like I showed you initially on the ground paper. I think I will still have to take you back to it for further explanation. So, but I just, the, 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 the skirt pattern, the front and back, can be together just like this. From this, now we can bring out the front and the back together. But if you choose for easy understanding, you can separate the two as well. But if you want to look at it in this single pattern, if you want to look at the front and back pattern in this single one, this line, this waist line, is the one that is ideal for the back. For the front, from this point O, from this point of intersection, come down by 2 cm and use your French curl. Sorry, use your French curl. Look at it. Look at this is your waist point, this is your hip point. You can see, look at from this waist point, place your French curve and connect this curve line. Can you see that? So, this line will give you the front waist line, this one will give you the back waist line. Now, if you also want to do it, you know. You know, at the back, you always have your zipper allowance. So that is why you must come out from this line. You know, like from here now, this will be the center back. This will be the center front. If you want to have the two together in a pattern. So I hope you understand that. Please, I just want to get back onto the other side so that you, you I can give further explanation. Now, exactly what I have done in the other, well, exactly what we have finished together in one. What we drafted now, we put, we put it together in one. That is exactly what is separated here. You know, it's exactly the same measurement parameter. But I just want you to look at the distinct feature of what the front skirt pattern is and what the back skirt pattern is. Now, this is the center back. This is the center front. Let your center front be always towards the, the right hand side if you choose to separate it. Now, it's the same hip, uh, it's the same waist measurement, the same hip measurement, the same. You can see they all share the same line. They all share the same horizontal line. You can see that. Now, you know, from this line, from this waist line, I said come down by 2 cm 
and use your French pulse to connect. That helps to shape the drum. You know, the essence of that is that when you are done sewing the skirt or when you wear the skirt, it will not be folding, it will not be gaping like this. You know, this helps, you know, the shaping helps the skirt to sit well around smoothly around your waist. So that is the essence of this shaping. But the back does not need that. So that is that differentiates it. Then another thing at the back, at the center back. If you look at the back, you know, here at the back, we have a natural curve. You know, we have a natural depth. You know, you, you can feel it. You can feel it. That is why you have to shape. You know, you have to give another a, a slight that. Don't let it be more than one cm. Look at from from the waistline. I mean, from the sorry, from this line, from this margin, from this margin line, just like half of your that. You can look look at it from this is the edge, this is the center back line, which is your margin line, coming by one cm. And and use the, the your ruler to to give it a slanted shape into the upper hip line at the same level with your main gut. So it, it helps your skirt to lay flat at the back. It makes it to sleep well. So that's the difference between the two. But every other parameter is exactly the same thing. Now I want to stop here. In our next video, I'm going to show you how to how to trace out this pattern. Then we cut and sew the basic skirt pattern. But before I round up on this, I want to so I want to draw your attention to something. You know, here around the for the waist, we added three cm of hip allowance. It's when you pick the down. I mean, sorry, three cm of that allowance. It's when you sew the down that the shape of the skirt will come out the more. When you pick that down, it will make the skirt to be fitting, to be close, to have a close fit around the waist. Now the question is, what if I add this down and it makes my waist to be more than my hip? The essence is that it's not everybody that have that must have the shape. It's not everybody that everyone that you drag the skirt pattern for that we have clear or distinct difference between the waist and hip. For example, if this 22 cm, even without adding the dark, is 24 after the necessary um, adjustment. Like for example, what I mean is, what if the waist and the hip is, is closely the same? Like if the waist measurement is around 90 or, or 92, or even 94. You know, there are some body shape, you know, there are some people that the waist and the hip is exactly the same. In such a situation, you may not need to add that. Because when you add that, it will not make the waist to, to shoot out than the hip. So I hope you, you understand that. So there, there is always an exception to rule because we don't have the same body shape. So if the waist and the hip measurement is closely related, or is at almost at the same range, they're adding the that. You, you cannot, the, the, the amount of that you can accommodate should be equal to what the hip measurement is. But if it will take it far from the hip measurement, don't bother to add that allowance. Please understand that. Now, those are the basics, these are just, are just the basics of drafting the skirt pattern. I want you to know that there are other methods. Everybody comes up with new ideas and fashion keeps evolving. Fashion is dynamic. So you keep on learning. There are different methods of drafting patterns. You can draft skirt pattern in different ways. So, but what you have learned today is the basic. You can modify it. You can add to it as the time goes on. So there are still other methods that I would like to teach, but I want you to understand this basic one first. Thank you so much. So we look forward to the next class. Then we are going to draft, I mean, trace out the skirt, cut and sew it. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Then hit the notification bell so that each time I drop the, 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 the lesson, you can be notified. Thanks and God bless.